This is morning joy. This is morning joy. Good morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are here this morning. By God's grace, we are alive, we are in health and we have strength. We are coming to the sanctuary at this time. Um, I want to welcome every one of you who are here, um, all the family members, relatives. Friends, well wishers of our dear deceased sister, Sister Tekla John Sharp. I want to take the privilege to welcome everyone to the Diego Martin Seventh Adventist Church, where she has had been a member until she passed on. At this time, I want to ask you to stand with me as we offer opening prayer. Before I pray, uh, I am Brother Selvin Griffin, the first elder of the church, the Commandant Selvin of the church, and our pastor, Pastor Erlen Dolly, he is the pastor of the church. So at this time, let's bow our heads as we pray. Father in heaven, once again we are indeed grateful that you have blessed us, you have spared our lives, and we can see yet another day. Though we may not deserve it, you love us so much that you have given us yet the opportunity to breathe that fresh air which you have provided for us even from the very beginning. At this time, we are here to, some of us, in some way to mourn our sisters passing. And the second, secondly, we are here to celebrate our life, so much so that we thank you for the life that she has lived, that she would have been an example to every family member, every one of her community members, all her relatives and friends, and even here, our brethren at the church. We pray, O oh God, that as we celebrate that your Holy Spirit will be in this place. We know, O oh God, that you want to save every one of us. The those who have not accepted you as Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, this morning is the opportunity for them to do so. Continue to bless and be with us. In Jesus' name I pray, thanksgiving. Amen. Please be seated. God 
and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no more night there, and they need no candle, neither the light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Amen. Those who has the good point is that we see here. Please come the podium.
once goodies are being made. She had a real sweet angle. Mommy made many sacrifices for us as a mother to raise us, and we have never forgotten them. At home, she took care of her husband and our father to the very end of his life, which is where she also took her departure. Her generosity and dedication to be of service to others was impeccable. Mammy actively did babysitting, sewing, and poultry vending. In other words, we used to mind for to support the family. Therefore, one of the first things I learned about family was based on seeing my mom, mom's love, work hard, and care for us. Mommy stood strong in her faith as a Seventh-day Adventist and believed in the peace that passed all understanding and admonished us to instill that belief. Our mom was a meticulous, clean, and organized person. If she tell you she won that there, put it there. She maintained excellent records and kept our home spotless she took her responsibilities very seriously, loved, and went all out for us. She was the best mother that we could ever ask for. I am honored to have been her son. Rest easy. Rest easy, mommy. I love you. Thank you.
Jesus. I see someone is coming to ready.
could have been nice. I know there are many of you who would like to see a winner too. Many of us would have known Sister Shah as the best babysitter in four weeks. Now she took care of my last daughter for years and years and we became part of the family. Janelle could not be here this morning so she sent her tribute. And I read, Sister Shah was a special lady. Our friendship started at my beginning, I guess. My mother left her, left me in her care as a baby. She was just two months old while I went back to work. And over the years, I still enjoyed spending time with her. Long after, I nicely made it clear to my mom that I was too old for a babysitter. Sister Sharp was someone I enjoyed spending time with. She always had some snack or food or money tucked away for me and spared no effort to make sure I knew I was important to her. Whether it was my dreams of attending university or my little love life dramas, she was the person I could count on to listen. There was something about her that made me feel at home. She had an unstated strength that smiled through beings and a faith that persisted many days away from church. Yet, she was still very pleasant. The marks on her knees, I knew those were from long periods of prayer for her family and loved ones. The marks on her elbows, I knew were from leaning through her bedroom window to sweetly greet those who passed by. <laughs> since, I, since I was old enough to remember, Sister Sharp would do something consistently. Whenever I'm driving away with my mom, she'd stand either in the gallery or by her window and wave to me as we drove away until she couldn't see us anymore. No matter how grown up I felt, I got cherished. No matter how grown up I felt I got, I cherished those moments of sweet party. I was blessed to return home in December 2021, and I got to see my dear friend once, one more time. Her face was still kind, and we were giggling like no time at all had passed since I saw her. I sat outside her bedroom window and she still asked for updates on my love life and my work life. She was still ever pleasant, but I knew she was tired. Her elbow marks were still visible. And as I looked back at her, she was waving as expected. This will remain my last image of such a beautiful woman. I regret not being present with all of you to say goodbye to her one more time, but I'd love for each one to join in my tribute to this wonderful lady by holding close those loved ones God has placed in our lives. There are some people I wish would live forever, and yes, she was one. However, we can take comfort in knowing that she sleeps in Jesus and is waiting for that day when we will never, never part again. Sleep well, my friend, to her family. I pray that God comforts you to this time. Love always, Janet.
present good morning everyone my name is Sheldon Scott and I am the second eldest in the grandchildren memories of my grandmother were perfectly described by Uncle Ronald and cooking and the food and proof, proof of the food you could see <laughs> but in Grant's last couple of weeks I spent with her we that connection became so close I, I said Grant's I said I sorry we didn't get to spend as much time as we should have me having my own family and work but one thing she kept on repeating peace that passes all understanding and I stand here today and I want to pray for peace in this family let us put aside all our differences and let us grant her this last wish and I would like to read the scripture Philippians 4 6 and the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus do not be anxious about anything thanks again and sympathies for all in grief It doesn't make sense. Why? Because nobody else promised you anything. And he gave you the assurance. Even though you're dead, your child will live. So what do you want to get? I want to sing about heaven. It's a real place. We have the atmospheric heaven, the starry heavens, and we are going to spend 1,000 years in the heaven of heavens with Jesus. He said that in John 14, 1 to 3, let not your heart be troubled. Anything you're going to do in this life? Small thing, according to the saying, don't you really experience with Jesus. So take heart, 
condolences to all your family members and friends. I want to sing about heaven. Let's 
Mission in the Dead. Heaven, something sweeter over the time. You gotta have heaven in your heart. Heaven, something sweeter over the time. Jesus is heaven. Jesus in heaven. We have Jesus in your heart? You have heaven? Hear this now. I heard this song in 1977. I surrendered my life to Jesus in 1976. I got injured in 1970. Spent 14 months and 12 days in hospital. When I heard this song, it brought tears to my eye. Because if I had died then, I don't know what's But thank God. You saw something in the eye, you see, you see something. Listen now. Where would I be without Jesus? Tell me. Where would I spend my eternity? Lord, help me. Lost in a world full of sorrows. Without Jesus, where would I be, listen, friend? When your burden get heavy, kneel down and pray, and ask the Lord to walk them out, not yours, but his own way. Say in his arms, what a relief. Could somebody tell me where would I spend my eternity? Lost in a world full of sorrows without Jesus, where would I be? Oh, tell me, listen. Chapter 14 of John, verses 2 1 3. He said, he is preparing a place for you and me with him on my side that is all I would ever need for without Jesus tell me where would I be oh, tell you, tell you, tell you, tell you, where would I be without Jesus somebody tell me where would I spend my eternity Lost in a world full of sorrows Without Jesus Where would I be? The question to you is this, this thing. Where would you be without Jesus? You have to answer that for yourself And where would you spend your eternity? The choice is yours To be lost in a world full of sorrows Without Jesus, where would I? Oh, tell me this part now, listen. Without Jesus, in hell you would be. In hell you would be. You can read it for yourself in Revelation 20. Jesus, we are with I, with Jesus. At this time, we are cordial to the early the podium, our dear beloved pastor, whom God has blessed us to, to bless to shepherd this flock here in the community of this time. Pastor, good morning. Morning, everyone. Morning. Morning. I think you just heard this sermon. Yes. Do you think you want to hear another sermon? No. Someone said no? Usually when uh, family members ask the pastor to speak, 
They give us the time, you know. Let's make it short. Because uh, there's people have attended so many funerals. What else can you say? You've heard it all before. So whatever you're about to hear this morning is just a reminder. Everything that brought up in the sun, I'm sure you've heard it before. Without Jesus, where would you be? Uh, death is the ultimate critical event. The irrevocable cessation of life's functions. And so the man or woman that has worked several million dollars faces his or her last breath. Just as the poor man living in some ditch road under some bridge somewhere. In the year 1927, Al Capone made $105 million. And when he died, they searched his hands. There was nothing there. They searched his pockets. There was nothing there. Just as the hands of the rich and the poor are empty and buried. Job said in the book of Job chapter 1, and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What can we take with us from this place today? What is the legacy left behind by Sister Shah? Well, I've heard a few things. Well, the first one that comes to mind, my brother, is the sweet bread. I don't know, I love sweet bread. Perhaps that's why she was a good bread maker, a settler for neatness. You know, you go to some places and the place is very untidy. I'm sure that all her children, yeah, their homes are very neat and clean. Yeah. A very good mother, even taking care of people's children, is admirable. Among other things, very kind-hearted and loving. And inquiring, inquiring about people's love life, where you are. Is that a, that's what I mean? How is it with you and your love life, my sister? Good questions to ask. Many people are struggling with their love life and need some good advice. I promise you that I'll be short because the rain is falling. And uh, if we have anything today like what we had yesterday, then we need to get out of here as quickly as possible. I want to extend heartfelt condolences on behalf of the leadership of this church, the Diego Martin, Sunday Adventist Church, to the family, especially and all the friends that are here and those online we couldn't make it here today. And I pray that God's spirit of peace and consolation will console you in a special way. God has made a way. That is what but what can the son? If you listen to the words of the, the lyrics, God has already made a way. And uh, what I would like to share with you is a, for, as our text of meditation, the taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, and verse 4. Revelation chapter 21. And verse, verse 4. It says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. Amen, amen. Shall we pray? Father, we are thankful for your word. May it comfort each one of us here today and even those online. May the Holy Spirit take full control. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm glad that uh, God has already made a way to take care of these six shadows that covers us. Tears. He has promised to wipe them all away, every drop. Amen. 
But I, I like the, 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 the last one. It says, And there shall be no more pain. Yeah, the reason why I like that, I'm looking forward to that time when there will be no more pain. You know, people deal with pain differently. Yes, uh, yes. There, there's a kind of pain that you get when you sit in the dentist chair. All right. That's temporary. But then there's another type of pain that's, that, that is sort of <laughs> everlasting, what are the quotes? The cancer patient, that niggling pain that is constant. People deal with pain differently. And then there's a type of pain that you, you get when you when you when you experience hurt by someone emotionally, especially if that person is your family, the pain it runs deep. I heard my brother said, uh, "I hope that the division in the family is something like that. I'll be, that there'll be no division and unite." I'm thankful that God has promised to take away all that type of pain. Amen. The pain that you get when you get angry because of some sickness. How did I get this virus? Why did this happen to me? And especially if your family member is uh, not supporting, that is another more uh, depressing experience. They get more angry and they, the cycle just goes on. But then there are family members that are supportive. And we want to thank God for that. There's a type of pain that you get when you get a cut in your salary. You ever experienced that? You're working for 10,000 but it just get cut to five. There's a type of pain that you get when your children leave the house and you're alone. Tell you, brother. There's a type of pain that you get when somebody leaves the house and says goodbye, I'll see you later, and never return. Never return. God has promised Amen. that He will take care of all that type of pain. Amen. Amen. He says, there will be no more death. Death causes pain to those of us who are alive. We grieve and we mourn, yes. But it is saying something to us that we only have three score and ten. Whether you live to a hundred, God has promised us seventy years to develop characters yes. fit for heaven. How many more days do you have? The days of our years are three score years and ten out of seventy. And if by reason of strength they be four score years eighty. Yet still there is strength, labor, and sorrow, but it is soon cut off. Yes, yes. And we fly away. God has given us 70 years to take us to a place where there is no more pain, no more sorrow, no more Putin. I said that without any apology. No more. People living in a country where everything is okay, you're going to university, you're going to school, everything is all right, you're cooking, we're laughing, we're having fun, and all of a sudden bombs start to fall and destroy. Your family members are being buried alive, buried in mass graves. Some of them are being raped. Pain. That's what this world has to offer, offer us. Now. 
Jesus says, look, listen to me. I have prepared a place. If it's done, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go, Jesus said, to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again to receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. This world is not our home. Amen. Jesus has already prepared a place Amen. for you and me. He said, I've given you 70 years to get it right. Because you can't get into heaven. Gotta be careful how I say certain things. <laughs> You, you can't get up there being selfish. You can't get up there with hate in your heart. You can't get up there if you are a family member or a friend and you're backstabbing people and back talking them all the time. Yes. No, 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 no. You can't get up there if everything that God has said in here, you know nothing about it. You don't read this book. You can't get up there if you don't know God. True. So, whatever little time we have left, this occasion has brought us together so that you can hear the voice of God saying to you, get it right. No. So Nicodemus asked Jesus, how, how can I get into your kingdom? He said, you must be born again. You see, the first bird is unto death, and the second bird is unto life. Amen. You must be born again of water and of the spirit. All of us, we were born with an effective heart. I'm closing. I promise not to talk too much. You see, when you stand here, it's a different situation. And the spirit take a hold of you. Yeah. Amen. Yes. We were born with an effective heart. Do you know that? Yeah. And every time you attend the doctor, what he does? For what? No matter what it is. Takes that thing, what do you call it, a telescope? Puts it in his head and he listens to your heart. Why? Because if the heart is not functioning, everything else seems to go all haywire. So you must get the heart functioning right. But all of us were born with an effective heart. And as I close, I want you to remember this. In Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9, it says, The heart is deceitful above. All things, one of us. That's the heart of man. Deceitful about. That's above the animals, everything. And desperately wicked. And cannot be cured. Jeremiah 17 and verse 9. You, you read the word of God. When you're dealing with people, you're dealing with people who have, whose hearts are effective. So what Putin is doing, he's, he's operating in the candle, under candle is, <laughs> use that word, his heart is the effective. Everybody born after Adam were born in sin. We were born in sin and shaped in any iniquity. The wages of sin is death. But, John, Hallelujah. Romans 7, chapter 6 and verse 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our oh Lord. You can't take us to heaven with that man heart, so he has promised to do something. In Ezekiel 36, verse 27, 26 and 27, yes, yes. he says, I will take out that old heart yes. and I will give you a new one. Yes. And in verse 27, he says, I'll, Not only that, I will give you my spirit yeah. that will cause you to walk in my way. Amen. You want to get to heaven? You got to get it right. Allow God to take out that wicked heart. Now you can try on your own, you know, but you won't succeed. You can try to be as good and kind as possible. But it's what it, it is the heart that matters. The heart must be transformed. And it's only God can transform. Amen. How is it done? By spending time in his presence. Amen. Not just on a Sunday morning or a Sabbath morning or Wednesday night. No, all your time is in God's presence. Because in His presence there is fullness of joy. Yes. And at His right hand there are pleasures forevermore. You know why? It is in God's presence that we are transformed. Amen. It is in God's presence that we are home. Yes. It is in His presence that Daddy takes care of us, preparing yes. us for translation. Amen. 
So many of us want to get ahead and have a cup of chill. Sister Daisy, I'm sorry I can have a good Bible study here to today. When I finish with you all, everybody reading the Bible. I'm telling this. When God comes, I must have been sitting there. I eat and I drink and I go man and man and all kinds of things and I jump up and I carry on and so on and so on. Then God comes and he goes to the I'll see Peter by the gate and I'll beg a little thing. I'll ask him like a little blind. You know what we say to him? I'll see Peter by the gate and I'll ask him for a little blind. So I could just slip in. Don't fool yourself, brethren. It is all about character development. When somebody calls your name, who do you think they are calling? What are, what are they referring to? They are referring to your character. So when they call Sparrow, what do you think of? Father so his character. Kitchener, what do you think of? All kind of woman, thinking and dining. You think of a cemetery and all that. When people call your name, they are calling your character. It's the only thing you'll be taking to heaven. This body will be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. This corruption will put on incorruption. It will be changed. The only thing that we should concentrate on in this little time that we have here is to develop characters fit for heaven. And God has already provided all that is necessary to get us ready for heaven. I'm thankful for the life that our dear sister lived. But her probation is closed. We who are alive and remain, we have an opportunity to get it right. To make our calling and election sure. I pray that the little time you have, and I want you to check it 25,550 days. I think that is the things. Mathematicians, please, correct me. You do the math. And see how many days you have left to 70. That's it. That's it. If by reason of strength you live on a little bit, that is. I still have the key. I still have the good book. You know what I mean? <laughs> how many days you have left? You want to work on sheets of gold, right? Yeah. You want to see all the open streets of the world. Let me see if I can find a text as I do so. All the experiences, don't take it for granted, my brother. He says, and he showed me a pure river of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life. You remember God had to run Adam and Eve out of the garden before they ate of the tree of life and perpetuate sin forever? <laughs> but I understand the tree of life will be there Amen. in heaven. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Amen. So that is for those of us who are like me, I'm just 5'10". I understand Adam was some 18 feet and he was 16 something. All of us short. But when we eat the leaves, yeah. We we'll go back to our original life. The leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. By the way, the herbs outside here, when you're sick, check them out. You have to develop a taste from here. And the tree bearing 12 manner of fruit, I don't understand what kind of fruit there. Must have a, they call them an herb. Yeah? Starch. It must have a jewelry on that tree, something in it, that's right? Because whatever it is, the Bible says, I have not seen or heard 
Need a heart of entered into the heart of man the things that God has gone to prepare for them that love him. He can't start to imagine. In sight of the worthy, he still can't start to imagine. And there shall be no more curse. All this pain that we're experiencing is a curse. That is why women bring forth children in pain. Pain. No more curse. You looking forward to that time, brother? Are you looking forward? Amen. Yeah, yeah, come on, man. But the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their forehead. And there shall be no light there, because the Lamb himself will be the light. Amen. Lord have mercy. I want to stop here. I just want to encourage somebody. You make your calling and your election sure. There's a story that I would like to share with you for the time as well. So I will share that the next time you come to church. I'm looking forward to seeing you. I have a nice story for you. When you come, just let me know that you're here. And I will give, I will give you that story. That's for our hearts. Father, we are thankful for your word. We cannot walk this path on our own. Because all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so we ask, O oh Lord, for your mercy and for your grace. And we are thankful that you have already made a provision. That's why you said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You have, you have prepared a place for us. But yet some of us, we take it for granted that we can live as we please and do as we want and just when that time comes, we enter, but you have set the course in your will that we should try. And so I'm asking in the name of Jesus that you convict each heart here. Though this time is a time where we are meditating and contemplating the life of our dear sister Shell, we use this as an opportunity so that when our time comes, we will not be found wanting. So help us, Lord, each, each home here represented, pass by each one. Bless each home. Beat back the forces of evil. Cover your people. Put a hedge around them. Keep them in your pavilion. Take charge of each one of us as we get ready for our time. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us ask the family members who are here, please, if you can come a little closer. Let's stand. Come a little closer. Uh, we want to have a committal. I'm thinking that we should do the committal here. And uh, the prayer of comfort and more. Just in case the rain starts to fall over there, the committal would have been done already. So I'm asking the family members that are here to come forward. I'm asking the congregation to kindly stand very well. Let's come. Let's come. Come on. Come on, nice little sense of God. As best as you can. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though ye were dead, yet shall ye live. Fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And have the keys of hell and of death. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works to follow them. I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, 
neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. As much as God, in his infinite love and wisdom, has permitted our dear sister, Tecla Jane George Sharp, to fall asleep in Christ, we do tenderly commit her body to the ground, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, in the, in the sure and certain hope of a joyful resurrection. When our Lord shall return in glory, then this body of our humiliation shall be changed and made like unto his glorious body, according to the mighty working whereby he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Shall we bow our heads? Our Father which shall be heaven, whose judgment are unsearchable and whose ways are past finding out, hallowed be thy name. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting heavens. You drive the enemy out from before us, because you are our God. You come to the Lord to present this family to you. Ask him for your mercy and your grace to attend each one, that your healing band be placed upon each one, that your, that your, your, your righteous covering will encircle each one, that your spirit of peace and consolation will comfort each one, that you take them in your loving arms and hold them there, Lord. Yes. Pray, lying there before us, go on for her until the day of your resurrection. But until that time, O oh Lord, help that each family member will know that even though Sister Tecla is not here, that familiar voice that they once heard is no more, they can still hold on to the head of your family. They can still know that you're a rock in a weary land, Jesus. You're still a cooling shade on the burning sand. You're still a faithful guide for the pilgrims and your shelter in the time of storm. Help them to trust you when they cannot trace you. Grant that this experience will draw each family member closer to you. And that will cause them to be drawn closer to each other. That they will support and pray one for the other. That they will look up for each other, especially in the immediate hours, days, and weeks ahead. Oh Lord, put it within them to look after each other. Bless them in a special way. The friends that are here, those online, or who are passed by each home, take charge, Lord, and help that the word that was spoken here, that we don't have much time. You who sat in our heart, keeps it beating. The Lord, you know when it will, when you will stop it. But we don't know. So help us, Lord, to make our calling and our election sure. Bless this congregation and the homes represented. It's my humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go tell my enemies I am under the rock. 
talking right here. And then maybe we'll get to talk with one another. Right. Okay. There's a family of Assange that I normally send to my devotion, so I want to share them with you. That hallow our day. So in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. Me and this We have no Excuse me.
I don't have a lot of they give me up so long, it's just many years ago. You know when you still alive? I'm just saying that this one thing that I have. So you remember JK at any own way? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Put the small one in the end, you know. Yeah, 